the important thing with respect to price action trading or anything really in market is to realize that every situation that you have in the market, okay? So you have a current state, whatever it is. And this state is, this gets a response. By the market and then the response itself becomes current state so this happens on every bar and then that gets another response okay every time you have anything on the chart that is history it's past that used to be the current state at some point, or you can call it an event, any one of them. So the entire price action, so PA, price action, uh, is a series of events and responses. And that goes on and on. And then this becomes itself an event, right? So this becomes an event and market gets a response to this. So if you think about this, then you can easily characterize everything that's happening on the chart and assess what the market's response is to the last event that was produced one bar ago, 15 bars ago, five bars ago, it doesn't matter. This is the mechanism in general. Now with respect to tops or, or bottoms, Let's say bottoms first. So market is going down in a channel. Every time that you have a new low price, like this, this used to be a low, right? This used to be a low. And here we have a new low. So this is our event. That's the event. Market goes to a new low. Then what's the response to this? When it gets to the new low, there's only two things that the market can do more sellers or more buyers which one do you get and that's the response to this event okay so this becomes the response if you see that there are failures and rejections then odds are this is this is finding support here so if the response is buys or you can say it's failure to go down, failure to go down, then it means you're probably in a trading range. And every top and bottom that forms, forms first in a trading range. So this area here, let's change this color to something else, more interesting. So this area here, is going to be a trading range at least for a few bars, possibly longer before the market goes the other way. So the immediate response to that is, okay, so how do you explain, you know, V bottoms and V tops? This trading range happens. Doesn't matter if it is a V top or a V bottom. Uh, first of all, there are low probability events. So the probability for a V is about 20%. But in this portion, you always have at least a trading range on a lower time frame. So this trading range might happen on the current time frame or on a lower time frame. And furthermore, these Vs are usually second legs themselves. So if you go back and look at the chart, When you have a V top or a V bottom, the market has usually established the top and has been going sideways or down. And then it's coming up to test this prior one and then immediately gets a rejection and goes down. And this is how a, you know, a V top, for example, is formed. And the opposite happens for the bear case. So market is going down and then there is some rejection from the first try to go lower. 
and then the market comes back down, tests this point, can't go lower, but this is the second test. And then you have this V reversal that's very powerful. Second leg failures, which is a very common occurrence in trading ranges. Now let's look at some charts. Quick question on this, Ali, please. Yes. Uh, so between your, on, on a bottom chart here, um, your, your top before getting down to the second bottom, do you hold through this or do you exit somewhere? Sorry, during, during this move down? Right, right, right. So do you exit during this move or do you hold it through the second bottom? Well, really depends on what happened up to this point. So this area. You have to, there is no definite answer. You have to look at the chart and, and decide what you want to do. But we are going to look at the, some examples so that there is real charts to talk about. Just give me one second.